Morning Trainiacs. Just on a Team Trainiac Zwift ride here. We do these Thursday mornings. Come join. Open to all. I had an interesting question. So as a lot of you might know, I am trying to get my FTP back up to 300 watts. And I started posting some of the workouts that we've created. And somebody said, well, why are you doing workouts that are above your current FTP to get it up? All of the plans that I've seen have been for time spent under FTP to push it up. And I was like the exact opposite. The plans that I've done and that I've seen have been more about pulling it up with doing intense intervals above. And to be honest, I didn't really have any context for why one might be better than the other. So I started looking at studies out there to see what is actually the best way to improve your FTP. So we're gonna go through what the science actually says with how to improve your FTP the best. I'm short of breath today. Air's apparently thin at Winnipeg altitude, i.e. minus 40. It's not altitude, but air's thinner. Whew. All right, gotta chat. Okay, Trainiacs, this was a fair bit of work. Surprisingly, it's actually fairly hard to find really good data on specifically FTP, Functional Threshold Power Studies. The reason for this is that scientists like data that they can use that is repeatable and valid. So repeatable means that every time you complete a trial of a test, you get the same or a very, very similar result. Valid means that every single time you do it, you know that you're going to get a number that is fairly accurate. Fact of the matter is though, that one of the reasons that I have said that FTP isn't the be all end all that you have to base your entire year's worth of training around is because yes, it is very useful, but it isn't necessarily repeatable or valid. Before you lose your mind and get into the comment section already, let me get into this. First, personally, I like the Zwift FTP ramp test as opposed to the historic 20 minute average test where you then take 95% of your average power during that 20 minute test and then assume that it's going to replicate what you would do over a 60 minute max power test. I like the Zwift FTP test because in my opinion, it is more replicable. It's more reliable that you can go and repeat it week after week after week because there's only about three to five minutes at the end that is hard, whereas the 20 minute or the 60 minute FTP test require a lot of things to go well to start getting consistent data. Just think about the difference between a really good or bad sprint race or a really good or bad Ironman race. The difference between a good and bad sprint race is maybe three to four or five minutes, difference between a really good or bad Ironman could be hours for even the most well-trained Ironman athletes. So I really like the Zwift FTP test because it takes a lot less out of you. You're able to complete it more frequently so you can get a trend line that even if the tests themselves are a little bit up or a little bit down, you can get more data points that can at least point you in a direction for your training. It also requires only just a few really hard minutes and you can stay mentally really strong for a few hard minutes where staying mentally really strong for 20 or 60 minutes is very difficult. So in my opinion, it's more replicable, but does that mean it is valid? In this blog post here that Zwift put up about deciding which FTP test you should use, they outline the 20 minute, the 60 minute, and the ramp test. And even they say that it's more than likely that you're going to get a accurate number from the 20 minute test. So that makes the ramp test less valid. However, what they do say down here is that novice riders, beginner riders are gonna have an easier time with the ramp test and experienced riders are going to likely be able to do a 20 minute test a little bit more accurately. But I mean, I've been doing this 
10 years and I still find that I have a hard time getting reliable data from a 20 minute test because it's so dependent on how you're feeling and how you execute that test on the day. So personally, I just like using the ramp test. So then the question of, well, if the ramp test isn't as accurate as the 20 minute test, is the 20 minute test or the 60 minute test even accurate in itself? Now this test here called functional threshold power in cyclists, validity of the concept and physiological responses actually goes to compare the 20 minute test versus the 60 minute test. And the idea is that the 20 minute test allow you to take 95% of that average power during the 20 minute test and that will be what you hold over 60 minutes, theoretically. But even that alone in this study actually showed that what happened was they did a 20 minute test, took 95% of that power and then saw how long they could hold that power for 60 minutes. Would it actually just stop at 60 minutes? And what they actually found was that the time to exhaustion was actually 51 minutes. So it was off by almost 17% itself, but the variation was so far off that some athletes were as low as 34 minutes time to exhaustion, whereas other athletes were up to 68 minutes of time to exhaustion. So that 20 minute test isn't even accurate to the 60 minute test. But let's drill down a little bit more and figure out what are we even trying to figure out with these tests? What we're trying to get with the FTP test is the FTP is theoretically the approximate point at which we dip over past our VT2, our ventilatory threshold two, our second lactate threshold. And this is the point at which we start going so hard that our body can't keep up with the production of lactate. So lactate ends up building and we are just in a never ending battle of going down and down and down and down and we can't keep it up. If we stay under that threshold, we should be able to go for a longer period of time. And the idea is that if we increase where that lactate threshold happens and we're able to hold higher and higher power, we're going to be able to go faster and faster for longer. But then with this study called maximal lactate steady state versus the 20 minute functional threshold power test in well-trained individuals, what's the big deal? I love me a good pun. What they actually found out and concluded was the results indicate that the power output at FTP 95%, what is commonly used is different to the lactate threshold. And the bottom line is that it would not be advisable to use this as a representation of the lactate threshold. So all of this stuff about is the ramp test accurate? Is the 20 minute test accurate? Is the 60 minute test accurate? When it comes right down to it, it's not even accurate to what's physiologically going on in our body. But that doesn't mean that these tests aren't useful. FTP has been shown to be a good correlation with predicting actual race performance. What this study showed was that the findings indicate that the 20 minute FTP test is actually more valid as testing for the prediction of performance in a mass start bike race than VO2 max for moderately trained cyclists, you and me. So what we're finding is that while these FTP tests, the ramp tests, the 20 minute tests, the 60 minute tests aren't something that you can use in a lab to replicate data over and over and over, it's still something that we can use to help guide our training. Because if we can improve our FTP, there is a higher likelihood that we're just gonna go faster in a race. So I like FTP, but I don't like it as the be all end all because it isn't 100% predictive of race performance. In my opinion, what you need to do is design a program to increase your FTP. And then when you get into race season, take that higher power that you can hold for a longer period of time and refine it into longer endurance race type kind of power. So you start doing more intervals around and slightly above your race effort as opposed to around and above your FTP. Then the big question is scientifically, what do we know actually increases your FTP? What is better? Do we try to push it up with longer intervals that are underneath your FTP for longer than 20 or 60 minutes cumulative? Or do we try to pull it up with shorter intervals that are above your FTP for somewhere between 10 and 25 minutes? 
Training Peaks actually did a really good presentation on whether the push method or the pull method was better. And what they explained was that it's not just as simple as one or the other. The analogy that they used is like a fitness house where the VO2 max is your ceiling. That's how much oxygen you can process at a maximum capacity every single minute. And that your FTP is slightly below that. And then what happens is you do a bunch of FTP building training that increases your FTP, but then it gradually gets closer and closer to that VO2 max ceiling, at which point you need to then increase where the VO2 max ceiling is so that you have more room to then further increase your FTP. So in order to build our FTP, we need to both increase our VO2 max and our actual FTP. How do we do both? Well, there's one study called Acute High Intensity Interval Training Improves T-Vent and Peak Power Output in Highly Trained Males. And what this showed is that by doing intervals that were about 60 seconds long, it was 20 times 60 seconds with two minutes rest in between, very short, very sharp intervals at super high power, very close to your VO2 max above your FTP, the pull method, it didn't increase your VO2 max. There was no change in VO2 peak. However, that hit group showed significantly greater increases in the ventilatory threshold one and two. What this is showing is that those sharp 60 second intervals did a better job of pulling the FTP up. There is another study called Superior Performance Improvements in Elite Cyclists Following Short Interval versus Effort Matched Long Interval. So what this is getting down to is another level of, well, is it short intervals or is it longer intervals that work? Because the previous study just showed that intervals in general work. And what this found is that the short intervals of as short as 30 seconds did a better job of improving the FTP than the longer intervals of about five minutes. Specifically, this says the mean effect size of the improvement in the above variables revealed a small to large effect of short interval training versus long interval training. The data thus demonstrate that the present short interval protocol induces superior training adaptations compared to the present long interval protocols in elite cyclists. For FTP, short intervals are better than long intervals. But what happens when we get that FTP up to the point of hitting the ceiling? How do we improve our VO2 max so we can continue to improve the VO2 max? How can we give ourselves more room to more easily improve our FTP? Finally, this is a meta-analysis, basically a study of a whole bunch of studies titled VO2 max trainability and high intensity interval training in humans. And we've got to go a long, long, long way down here at the bottom, but what they get to in basically the very last sentence is. Finally, many of the interval training studies reporting large increases in VO2 max also used longer three to five minute duration intervals. So the bottom line is, is that it's not all pull your FTP up, it's not all push it up. A well-designed FTP building plan should have short, really sharp intervals in the range of, I would say about 15 seconds to 90 seconds with somewhere around a one to one or a one to two work to rest ratio. So you can hit those really hard effort levels. And then you also have to pair that at the same time with improving your VO2 max with longer intervals in the three to five minute range with a work to rest ratio of somewhere around one to one or two to one. So the bottom line is that, surprise, surprise, it is a well-rounded training plan that increases your FTP the best. So include both. And if you aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button below where I will be sharing more of exactly the workouts that I'm putting together to do both. Pull up my FTP and push up my FTP with the goal of getting to 300 watts in an indoor training test. That'll be an all time best. Later Trainiacs. Oh, and if you wanna see another video on this whole FTP journey and where I'm at, check that one out right over there.